Hello Defenders, it's day 981 of Russia's shameful invasion of democratic Ukraine. An aftermath of the terrorist Russian attack in Kharkiv, the UN Commission of Inquiry presented new report on the Russian crimes against humanity. Putin's nuclear threats are not considered scary anymore. Ukrainian president revealed the amount of the US military aid delivered to Ukraine in 2024. And do Russians prepare for a new offensive in Ukraine? You are watching the only facts with the operator Starsky and we will talk about the most important updates right now. Tonight in Kharkiv, the Russian FAB 500 bomb hit another civilian building. This time more than 30 civilians were hurt, including a 12-year-old boy found dead as a result of the Russian strike. The rescue operation continues and there are still people under the debris, including another child, a 15-year-old teenager. Rescuers hope that they can be saved. The Russian authorities have committed crimes against humanity, according to the report of the UN Commission of Inquiry. In previous reports, the Commission found that Russian authorities used torture widely and in a very organized way. The Commission now found that violence practices from Russian detention centers are being repeated in similar facilities controlled by Russian terrorists in Ukraine. Also, numerous cases of sexual torture and mutilation were found committed by the Russian terrorists, especially against the male prisoners. You can find the link to the report in the description, and I wonder if Antonio Guterres knew about it before going to Russia last week, which is a good question, because he's a chief of the UN and he must have known about the upcoming reports planned to be presented by his subordinates to the broad audience. But apparently Russian vodka and magical sounds of balalaika were just too hard to resist. You know, it's like, uh, Joe, book me a flight to Russia. We will condemn them for the crimes against humanity next week. It's a known fact that Russian terrorists produce a lot of nuclear threats on a daily basis. The FBI's investigation confirmed that the leading Russian communication agency led by Ilya Gambashidze, a man responsible for all those millions of fake accounts in the American social media, pursued the goal of increasing the nuclear hysteria among the Western citizens. Apparently, it was done to remind you that they still have nuclear weapons to make you feel scared, you know. Uh, that was a direct order from the Putin's administration, dissatisfied with the fact that democratic citizens don't fear Russia anymore. That is why we see a lot of Russian nuclear tests and exercises being executed in the terrorist federation. Some of them extremely cringy, like the failed test of the Russia's feared nuclear missile Sarmat that exploded inside of the launch silo in 20th of September. This week, internationally warned war criminal Putin, widely known as Huilo, announced new nuclear military exercises, expecting to sow panic among the Western citizens one more time. Time. However, it only provoked extremely humble reaction from the international community and Pentagon stated that the US don't see any threat that would compel them to change their posture. Fact is, Russian nuclear threats that are clearly being produced for the purpose of propaganda became so frequent so they just don't provoke expected reaction from the international community anymore. Apparently, Gambashidze and his attempt to sow nuclear hysteria on the West sucks balls, in my personal opinion. According to President Zelensky, only 10% of the military aid approved by the US Congress this year have arrived to Ukraine so far. We're talking about the crucial air defense to protect Ukrainian cities from the Russian ballistic and cruise missiles, as well as other weaponry required to stop the Russian advance in the Pokrov's direction, for example. You know, the Russian disinformation pushes those narratives about gazillion dollars being parachuted over Ukraine, at the same time the true numbers are much, much more humble. There are two reasons the narrative about the American tax money uh, still circulates in the social media. Reason number one is the above-mentioned Gambashidze, who creates fake people 
in Twitter, who then pushed those narratives. Reason number two is some dirty politicians who use it in their election campaign. And while it's necessary for the politicians to lie from time to time to reach wider audience and boost their votes, it creates dangerous attitude in people's minds. It's when you convince millions of people in your country that hungry foreigners eat your pets or calling their countries garbage and eventually it leads to something we saw in Germany in the late 1930s. Humankind already went through all this, we know exactly how such rhetorics end, that's why we used to say never again, but unfortunately humankind keeps running with scissors and it's not because people are bad, it's because we have Russian terrorists effectively using information as a weapon against us. Check out Ryan Macbeth's video where he explains how exactly American tax money are being spent for Ukraine. You can find the link in the description. Spokesman for the South Operative Command of the Armed Forces of Ukraine stated that the Russian terrorists prepare a new offensive in Zaporizhia Oblast. He said that the Russians already finished military exercise on the occupied territory and prepared to use available troops, specifically armored units, in two directions. Apparently, we are talking about Vilnyansk and Orikhiv, two towns located on the outskirts of Zaporizhia. Before the full-scale Russian invasion, Vilnyansk and Orikhiv had combined population of roughly less than 30,000 people. Majority of civilians were evacuated as of today due to the incessant Russian shelling, and taking control over those settlements can set the foundation for the following Russian siege of Zaporizhia, which is one of the major Ukrainian cities. The biggest problem is that Zaporizhia is located on the left bank of Dnipro, which introduces a lot of problems for the Ukrainian logistics in terms of delivering munitions and personnel in case the important transportation hub in Vilnyansk stops functioning. And apparently this could be a strategic goal for the Russian terrorists uh, they will try to achieve in 2025. As of today, since the very beginning of the Russian invasion, the terrorists weren't able to establish control over any major city of Ukraine. In the beginning, though, they took control over Kherson, which was later lost during the Ukrainian counteroffensive of 2023. And since that time, the Russian progress in Ukraine was extremely slow and painful. To understand the pace of the Russian advance in Ukraine, let's take a look at the early days of the Russian invasion, when they would gain as much as 1,265 square kilometers on a daily basis in March 2022. In September this year, the average pace of the Russian invaders, it's considering more than 1,000 Russians being lost every single day, uh, the terrorists only gain roughly 14 square kilometers on a daily basis. The Institute for Study of Warfare stated that such slow advance emphasizes the stagnation of Russian progress after more than two and a half years of war in Ukraine. Some of the generals in the comments somewhere uh, wrote that despite all this, the Russian army still makes slow progress, capturing more and more Ukrainian territory. And frankly, I cannot agree more. I'm only not sure who feels happier about it, Putin or Russian widows. Imagine the celebrating faces of the Russian orphans observing ruins of Bakhmut and Avdiivka. What an achievement! It was totally worth losing their dads in a foreign land for Putin's ambitions. It is such a heroic struggle of the Russian nation against its own future, a prominent fight for the right to be called war criminals internationally, uh, being despised for stealing toilets and preparing their grandkids to pay enormous reparations to Ukraine in the future when Putin is no more. My dear defenders, in 2022 the Russian invasion looked menacing, for real. Two years later it looks painful and stagnant. Two years from now we will see the Russian invaders being 
extremely surprised with the fact they failed to win the war of attrition. And just a bit later, we will see the masses of the Russian citizens being extremely sorry for what they did in Ukraine, completely unaware of the Russian atrocities committed against Ukrainian civilians. We all know how it ends for the fascist regimes who thought that they could have it all and never face responsibility for their crimes. My personal advice is to prepare psychologically for the inevitable collapse of the Russian regime. Because a country with a GDP smaller than Italy cannot last long against the whole democratic world. With that, my friends, I wish you a beautiful day. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments. I'm Operator Starsky. As always, be safe.